The motivation for today's video is dealing with bottlenecks with inside your program. This happens to all of us at some point. And instead of estimating or getting a theoretical idea, let's actually find out where this is coming from. We're going to look at time it, C profile, time, as well as the line profiler. <laughs> Welcome everybody, you're watching Mr. Fugu Data Science. Here's my socials, feel free to hit me up. Also, go to my channel page, hit the community tab if you have any comments or suggestions for videos, I'll like that. Today we're gonna look at Python profiling. Let me show you real quick what I'm talking about. Pose the question like this. For example, this simple question, if I have a function running for 10 minutes, what portion of my total runtime is due to this function? 30%, 90%, who knows? Let's step back real quick and think about something. We can investigate the outermost portion, consider that your program. You could benchmark or you can run the program to see how long it takes so you get your baseline. Then you can look at function level analysis to figure out what functions may be slowing you down. And then from there, you could go extremely granular and go line by line of your code. You need to be careful because you may have code dependencies which may complicate your program and cause extra function calls slowing you down and making it hard to reference or track anything down. We need to make sure that there's a distinction between benchmarking where you're running a program many times and measuring the time to complete each run and then there's profiling so consider that as evaluating the time or memory for a program. You could do this for functions line by line and see basically where the resources are occupied. You have deterministic profilers and statisticals. Deterministic are more accurate, but you have a lot of overhead when you're running these. Think of this as if you're running the same input, getting the same output, whereas a statistical measure has fewer overhead, but you're gonna sacrifice some of your accuracy to get that speed. So let's consider the profile as if you're trying to get an idea of what circumstance works best. When you're using time, for example, we're just using this as a stopwatch. You're using this to measure time for a single run. You're not doing anything for an entire program. And we have this simple example where you're just importing it in and you have a start time and end time and you wanna see how fast this function, for example, is running, block of code, whatever. Time it on the other hand is a benchmarking portion for lines of code or blocks and you're not doing entire program you're doing this in isolation also feel free to pause the video and see what the parameters are which go inside of the time at or use shift tab when you're coding this out so here's an example of time it where we're looking at 100 values from 0 to 99 all separated by a dash and we're doing some string joints looking at various loops and calculating their speed you keep running this it's going to run different this is a very simple example but just letting you know it's available lastly if you're using long running calls consider using the magic for time or the magic for time instead of time it even though you're sacrificing precision you're gaining speed the C profiler runs on an entire program you are evaluating a function call and then you're giving an average time for these calls and then it spits out a list of the most frequent but you have high overhead using this and it's not viable for a production manner you're not using this for every line of code that's where you will use a line profiler all right assume that you're in the terminal python in some file and you wanted to use the profiler for the c profiler here and that's how you type it in or you could throw in your c profiler just like this where you're trying to get the total time and you're sorting the values if you would like to run the code on a block instead of an entire program you can encapsulate everything such as this where you're taking your profiler and you're using enable and you're using disable where whatever code you want is in between them like a sandwich and then you could print out the stats. You do have an issue that you need to think about right here that's highlighted where the printout of this would generate a table but this table doesn't exactly have the relationships to each other such as dependencies that I was mentioning earlier. The cons, overhead, you're printing out each function represented by a line. The real world this would be an issue because you're going to have slow results and you may have inputs which may give specific outputs and slow down your program. This is a specific use case but it's something you should consider. Here's two options you can use. I left the links for them. Everything's in the link in the description below for my GitHub so feel free to get the full version of this there. Here's an easy toy example but it, it still gives you what's going on with the C profile. 
compiler, all right? You have 287 function calls, which were calls that were monitored. Of those, 285 of those were not recursive calls. This ordered by deals with the text strings in the far right column that were sorted. N calls will deal with the number of calls. Your total time is for each function. Your per call will be the total time over the end calls. Cumulative time is for all your functions. And then the second per call is dealing with the cumulative over the primitive calls, cumulative time. The last note I want to say is this. You need to consider this circumstance if you want to use the C profiler. These are good use cases. If you have CPU only tasks, calls that take a long time, you're investigating memory allocation, or you have like increasing counters. The line profiler is a good option if you know what block of code you're actually pinpointed so you can go line by line and figure this out. Here's how to download it if you want to download. Just be careful. If you are using Homebrew, if you have a Mac, the dependencies that you have are going to be an issue and you'll get a warning here. So I'm just letting you know, you can, you could install this normally, but just be careful with that. You have a few use cases where you can use this exclusively in a Jupyter notebook where you can use this magic command here after you've did your pip install and load this extension for the line profiler, use your function, whatever it's going to be, and then run the line magic so you can get your printout here like this. This little piece of code here is only used if you're using Jupyter notebook. It gives you a breakdown line by line, tells you what's taking the most amount of time. From there, you can evaluate what you would like to change for your functions. I'm gonna keep this up and show you something. If you're loading this and you're writing a script, but you are not using the exclusive Jupyter Notebook, you can call in the regular line profiler like this. We're using the same function again, but you have a, a couple more steps. We're creating this object for the line profiler where you're going to use this to get your stats. Then you you're creating this wrapper where you're calling your function within it. And before you do this printout here, let's look at something because it's going to look goofy. You got to pay attention to this. If I just call the wrapper, it's calling all of the prime numbers, right? But let's do something. What if I just call this print stats? That wrapper that you had stores this information here that we just neglected to see. And you're going to be kind of curious, but you need to call this wrapper so then you can actually call this. And let's look at something real fast. These values, they're not the same values. You see that? That. So you need to be aware of this as well. Command line option where you can call this kern prof and then you want to look at a list and you have some Python file. This kern prof is creating a file to store your results for your line profiler. And when it stores it, it's going to store it with this dot l prof file name right here on the end of whatever you're calling. And you can run Python 3 is what you would be using now. But in the command line, you'd run Python minus m and then the line profiler and then whatever file you're looking for now. If you wanted to chain more functions together, you just use the profiler that you already set up and do a dot add and then whatever function you're calling. And then another function and another function if you want. Then you gotta get your wrapper that you created. This wrapper is containing here your main function, which in this case would have dependencies on each one of these, which are functions within this. And then after you call that wrapper to start storing everything, you print it out and you get your statistics. There's really good external software where it makes this visual. So you can see this is like graphs, pie plots, and things like that. So you can, or even broke down to percentage wises and what is dependent on each other, things like this. These are some really cool external resources I'm not going into today. Optimizing is quite an issue because it's difficult. Managing your code, updating, or even readability later. And these examples here aren't really used for the real world because they're used when you're trying to create functions, create scripts, make micro adjustments but it's not something you're actually deploying in the real world like if you had a website that has updating data or something like that like eBay or you know or Amazon real world examples are a little bit different such as websites or anything with streaming data things like that so these use cases are going to be good if you're just creating scripts or functions but not necessarily if you're trying to deploy it in the real world I left some resources for you to read which are pretty good I highly suggest please like share and subscribe and if you subscribe turn on that notification bell thank you to my new member recently I'm doing another shout out to you greatly appreciate it if you have any suggestions remember contact me in the community tab and hit me up on those socials see you in the next video bye hey kid don't ever let them get inside your head they'll tell you what to do in life instead of everything you know that you could get don't let them guide your life towards regret